Hello, my name is Richard Kerr. You're watching this video because you want to learn a little bit about multidimensional family therapy, or MDFT for short. How will it help my loved one? Will it involve us as a family? What does it mean family therapy? Well, I'm here to help you answer some of those questions and hopefully bring some of those concerns that may naturally arise when you're starting a new endeavor. But first, let's start with story time. Well, let's start. Aesop was an ancient Greek fabulist and storyteller. He lived in Delphi, Greece at around 564 BC. I think the story can help us uh, get in the right frame of mind. Aesop tells that a man and his son were once going with their donkey to market, and they were walking along by its side, a countryman passed and then said, you fools, what is a donkey but for a human to ride? So the man put the boy on the donkey and they went on their way, but soon they passed a group of men, one of whom said, see that lazy youngster? He lets his father walk while he rides. So the man ordered his boy to get off and got on himself. But they hadn't gone far when they passed two women, one of whom said to the other, shame on you, lazy lout, to let his poor little son trudge along. Well, the man didn't know what to do. But at last he took his boy up on a ride to ride with him in the donkey. By this time they had come to the town and the passers-by began to jeer and point at them. The man stopped and asked what they were scoffing at. The man said, aren't you ashamed of yourself for overloading that poor donkey of yours with your weight and that of your hulking son? The man and boy got off and tried to think what to do. They thought of, they thought, until at last they cut down a pole, tied the donkey's feet to it, and raised the pole on the donkey on their shoulders. They went along amid the laughter and all who met them, and they came to the market bridge, where the donkey, getting one of his feet loose, kicked out and caused the boy to drop his end of the pole. In the struggle, the donkey fell over the bridge, and his four feet being together, gave him no support and he was drowned. That will teach you, said an old man who had followed them. Please all and you will please none. Okay, so let's think a little bit about the story. Do you ever feel like you're in a predicament where no matter what you do, you'll be judged? Ever tried to solve a problem where multiple people with multiple opinions cannot agree on how to proceed? How do we go on about working as a team to solve issues and have a plan that everybody can get on board with? That's a really good question, especially when it comes to family and addictions. Seems like sometimes Mom and dad don't agree on how to go on about it. And there's fights about it. Sometimes we think we know better, but our parents disagree. In this small video, we're gonna learn a little bit about what MDFT does from the perspective of the therapist and the perspective of the family and the adolescent and how all of those things connect together. So first we're gonna learn what is multidimensional family therapy, how it works, how does it work exactly, the stages of treatment, we're gonna learn about domains and goals of MDMT. Will MDFT work on us? What does the research say about MDFT? What can my family do to help? And then I'm going to put some resources. Check. So let us begin. What is MDFT?
MDFT is an evidence-based approach. What does that mean? Well, it has a volume of research that spans almost 30 years and is widely accepted and recognized as an effective approach to treat addiction, a social behavior, and family issues as a whole. MDMT is also an integrated and comprehensive approach. Addiction does not happen in a bottle. So this therapy looks at multiple aspects or dimensions of the client's life and addresses all of them while targeting specific interventions which are aimed at empowering them to stop the use of substances and getting life in order. MDFT reduces depression and anxiety by teaching adolescents new skills and helping them see life in a new perspective with a fresh set of eyes. As his name suggested, it is overall family-centered. Like in the story earlier, man, many families have different perspectives and ideas on how, to, love, how they're, to help their loved ones, dealing with addiction and other problems related to use. We address the systems and help you present as a unified front in tackling, in tackling these issues. MDFT helps with young problems and disorders, such as the system being involved, potential criminal problems, coexistent conditions, and in general resentment. Excuse me, resettlement. MDFT promotes pro-social alternatives to delinquent behavior and works with members of the juvenile justice system to advocate for the teen and coordinate interventions. More importantly, it keeps children home where they belong, while strengthening the child-parent relationships and developing ways to solve rising issues. Multidimensional family therapy has been implemented in a variety of levels of care and treatment settings and can be mapped onto just about any program. MTFVs have been researched and implemented in drug abuse, mental health treatment settings, including outpatient, in-home, intensive, and outpatient day treatment and residential. Among adolescents in juvenile justice systems, drug court, and child welfare settings. As culturally responsive and gender sensitive approach across the cultures and countries, as an early intervention or preventative approach for young adolescents in urban rural settings. Let's continue looking at MDFT. What are the treatment principles? MDFT promotes change in the mind of the child. Because teen problems are multi-dimensional. Multi it helps uh, parents relate and influence their children in a positive way. It encourages family solving problems together, coming together and loving one another. It also encourages family interactions with school juvenile justice system and their community. MDFT addresses the individual, family and environmental factors that contribute to drug use and related problems. Family function is instrumental in creating lasting change for adolescents. Motivation to change is alterable, and it is the therapist's responsibility to create the conditions that motivate youth and parents. Therapists care create individual working relationships with the adolescents, individual parents or caregivers, and collaborating professionals, and bring it all together. Individualized interventions harness family members' strengths to foster developmental competencies. Therapists' attitude and skills are fundamental to success. So let's talk a little bit about how MDFT goes from beginning to end. The first stage of MDFT is build a foundation for change. Essentially, therapists create an environment in which the youth and parents feel respected and understood. Therapists meet alone with the adolescent, along with the parents, and with the family, depending on the sessions and goals. During stage one, Goals are to develop strong therapeutic relationships, achieve a shared developmental contextual perspective on problems, enhance motivation for individual reflection and self-examination, and begin the changing process. 
During stage two, we facilitate individual and family change. So at this point in time, we're kind of in the, in the action phase where goals for youth, parent, and family functioning are established, evaluated, and revisited through this phase. Accomplishments in each individual domain activate and support change in others. And on the third, we sustain, we solidify those changes. The last few weeks of treatment strengthen the accomplishments parents and teens have achieved. The therapist amplifies changes and helps families create concrete plans for responding to future problems, such as substance use relapse, what do we do if there's family arguments or disappointments. The family members reflect on the changes made in the treatment, see opportunities for a brighter future, and regain hope. One of the biggest challenges is at the beginning, families feel like they're so far gone, like the situation is just so horrible that you're just not going to be able to overcome it. But then looking back after stage three, they see that they could overcome those things. So even if things digress, they know that there is a path that they can use to solidify those changes, to get back to where they need to do. And if things get bad, you can always formulate a new plan but they have to do it together as a family. So the goals within the MDFT domains are as follows. The adolescent domain, improve self-awareness and enhance self-worth and confidence. Develop meaningful short-term and long-term life goals, improve emotional regulation, coping and problem-solving skills, improve communication skills, promote success in schoolwork, promote pro-social peer relations, reduce substance use, delinquency, and problem behaviors, improve and stabilize mental health problems. And we look into the parent domain. We strengthen up the parental teamwork. They come together in a stern but loving way, parents set up rules and boundaries to help their child. They improve their parenting skills and their practices. They rebuild parenting emotional bonds that sometimes are so damaged because of all the things that have been going on. But like I said earlier, there is a way to get back to that. And they enhance parents' individual functioning. So now mom and dad, Instead of arguing with each other over how to help their child, their loved one, they're coming together as a team because they empathize with each other's approaches. They understand what each other are going through and they're ready to stand together as a unified front to help their child. Then it's a family domain. Improve family communication and problem solving skills. Strengthen emotional attachments and feelings of love and connection among family members. Improve everyday functioning of the family unit. And again, like with the parents, now it's the whole family as a team coming together to achieve the goals, to support their loved one, to address their individual issues, and to support each other as a whole. Then there's the community domain. Improve family member relationship with social systems, such as the school, court, legal system, workplace, and the neighborhood. Build family member capacity to access and actualize needed resources. And that one's really important because there's a lot of resources out there, but a lot of the times we don't even know where to begin looking for them and whether we qualify or not for some of those resources. And how do we deal with it? Where do we start? That's very important. What does research say about MDFT? This is really interesting research that was done um, over the past 20 years on MDFT. Um, Paul et al. tells us that a study conducted in the Netherlands with students that had drug and criminality uh, background were submitted to a comparison treatment of multidimensional family therapy compared to CBT, which has shown incredible progress for just about 
every condition, age, and setting. And it showed, interestingly enough, that as the relationships involved improved from the perspective of multidimensional family therapy, that even though in the immediate short term, the benefits were hardly seen, it still showed significant improvements in all of those areas, not just the drug cessation, but the actual improvement of behavior societally and within the family. And that's really important because what we're talking about is how the family is actually coming together to tackle the problems. And I, I know I've said this a few times, but this is like the, I think is the operating uh, component, the active component of MDFT. Larger studies, um, also known as metadata analysis. For example, this one uh, uh, summarized about 61 uh, effect sizes from about 19 studies, 19 manuscripts, for a total of 1,488 total participants. Of all that data, when compared with other therapies that were already established, such as cognitive behavioral therapy, the overall effect size of MDFT was significant. That is to say that even compared to the most effective, um, MDFT has proven to be, a, again and again, one of the most effective methods, um, as far as the science can tell us, of approaching not just the substance abuse for a teen, but also improving the relationships with the family and decreasing some of the behaviors that come with the, uh, with the drug use, such as criminality, uh, being put into the system, being removed from the household, et cetera, et cetera. Moderator analysis revealed that adolescents with high severity problems, including severe substance abuse and disruptive behavior disorder, benefited more from MDMT than adolescents with severe conditions. This is really important because what he's talking about, really, is that the worst cases were actually the ones that benefited the most, the ones that saw the most radical changes as to compare with those that had the milder symptomatology. This is important because a lot of parents feel like, well, you know, the therapy that you're going into may be useful for kids that are not too bad, but you know, like my kid's really bad and he's got a, a criminal history and they've been in the system and they're really at the last legs with this work. It's like, it's in fact MDFT saying, yes, not only will it work, it works better in your case. What can my family do to help? Well, as we talked about earlier, the counselor is working in those domains, you know, the parents as individuals, then they meet with the children, then they talk about developing skills for parenting and co-parenting, then develop parental intimate relationships family relationships, and then they help you work around in the community and just in general put you together uh, into a cohesive team. These are some of the things from the DACOF 2019 article that I really think you should know as a parent. And one of them is don't blame yourself. It's not your fault, but you are a critical key in your child's recovery. So. Maybe let's stop the blame game. Let me stop feeling uh, like we've done the damage. Maybe stop listening to the people that tells you that that is bad parent and that led to this whole situation. There's too many variables for us to consider in what deals with this. And so instead of blaming ourselves, let's let's switch our mindset into a growth mindset that allows us to kind of stand in there and say, you know what, I'm going to learn from this from this mistakes that we have made over the years. Let's come back together. We can come back together from this. Parents are the medicine. Parents, as I said, are a critical operating component. I want to help my child, and I just simply don't know how. If I get past the mindset that I know I'm just enabling my child and I'm not going to do it anymore, or the whole, my child is vulnerable, I cannot let them go, I cannot let them fall on their own, Admit mistakes. I can't do this because it could mean their life. Somewhere in between, somewhere in the middle, 
is a solution where you set in the boundary, but you send them with love. You letting them know that you love them, that you support them. And in the therapy, you're going to develop parenting and co-parenting skills that you perhaps didn't have before. Or, so you're actually developing skills that are going to let you deal with the problems that you've been dealing with, but in a different way. And this is the part that I've mentioned a number of times, and it's in this article again. Parents must, must parent as a united team. If mom and dad or parent versus co-parent become an antagonistic relationship, the child will not be able to um, respect them or listen to them because they feel like they're in the middle of the conflict and they don't want to be there. Resolve your differences away from the children. It's not saying let's hide somewhere and have an argument. What it's actually trying to say is that having unproductive arguments amongst each other is not helping you put your family together. But one thing that children do need to see is effective conflict resolution. So when the children are having an argument with, with both parents, both parents come together and they tell themselves, you know what, we had this discussion, we have decided that this is how we're going to proceed and we need your support. And once we decided that we're going to come up with that plan, then we implement it together. There was common agreement amongst all the members of the family that this is how we were going to go on about it and we're going to stick with the plan. And if things are not working out, we're all going to redress what the plan is, how we're approaching it, and then we're going to reformulate the plan together, and then we're all going to go back to implementing the plan as a team. Here's some further resources that you can start, and I put it a bit, as a bit of a, a checklist for you. Uh, the article that I was referencing earlier is called Five Essential Lessons for Parents and Substance Abuse Teens. Uh, by MDFT International Director Gail Dakoff. A great article, and it gives you a really good insight into how to begin addressing those issues and how MDMT can help you. Visit RethinkRecovery.org. It talks about different parents that have put their success stories, and it addresses some of the questions that may come even after watching this very comprehensive video. Contact an MDFT program in your area and find out if it's available, uh, whether they're covered by your insurance, uh, whether they're working with the legal system. How can you start taking that first step in the long journey to recovery? Finally, call the toll-free helpline at the Partnership for Drug-Free Kids to speak to a parent specialist at 1855 drug free that is 1-855-378-4373 they are licensed mental health professionals with years and years of experience helping individuals and their families prevent and overcome substance abuse problems they are there to help you out it's not a uh, charge they just a referral unit uh, feel free to give them a call that i think was gonna give you a solid first step in addressing the problem Finally, I just wanted to kind of give you guys uh, an insight into like the reference that I use for this particular presentation. I am always available for questions. Should you